this is Mrs. Ofton, and today we're going to be talking about summation, notation, and series. So you can see I have what looks kind of like a weird letter E here, and this is followed by a big long addition statement. It has some letters and numbers underneath and a variable on the top. This is something called summation notation. It's used when we want to add terms of a sequence together. So let's first learn what this summation notation means. So here's parts of the notation. So first of all, the symbol for notation is the Greek letter sigma. And that's what this funny E is, it's capital sigma. Here, we have the index of summation, I. Sometimes different letters, such as J or K, may be used. One tells us the lower limit of summation. And N tells us the upper limit of summation. So we would start with the first term and go through to the nth term in the sequence. The explicit formula for our sequence goes here where it says A sub I. So looking at a specific example, down here you see I have the sum as I goes from 1 to 6 of 2 times I plus 3. To evaluate this, I would write the first six terms of 2i plus 3, and then I would add them together. So if I do that right now, the first six terms of 2i plus 3, let's see, if i equals 1, this is 2 plus 3, that's 5. If i equals 2, um, 4 plus 3 is 7. If i equals 3, 6 plus 3 is 9. If i equals 4, 8 plus 3 is 11. If i equals 5, then I have 13. And if i equals 6, then I have 15. So I'm going to add these numbers together, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, and 15. And I'm going to get my answer of 60. Okay, so it's really just that easy. Now here are some properties of sums. You're going to want to write this down, and you're going to want to check to be sure these work. My little stick figure saying, are you sure? Yes. Check it out. I've suggested that you use 2 for C, 5 for M, and 2i for your A sub i function. For B sub i, you could use 3i, 5i, whatever you want. So here's some properties. The first property is that if this is just a constant term, then if I add that constant term, 1, well, n times, I'm going to get c times n, because I'll just be adding that same constant term, you know, n number of times, so it's just like multiplying, okay? If I have a constant times an explicit formula, so let's say I took that explicit formula, 2i plus 3, and I said I want to find the sum as n, or as i goes from 1 to 6, of 5 times 2i plus 3. Well, I could say, I don't need to go through writing all of those things again. I could just find my original sum and multiply by whatever the constant is. This is nice if the constant is a rational number or even an irrational number. Uh, here in property 3, I have a sum of two different sums. So I have this sum plus this sum. Well, maybe I don't want to do all that calcul calculation, and these are two pretty simple polynomials, for example. I can just add them together and then do the sum. This also works for subtraction. You see it right here. So I don't have to calculate the sum separately. I can just subtract. So I'm going to lean back out of frame so you can see that again. And there it is. One sum, subtract another sum. You can just subtract the formulas as they are shown right here. We'll work with some more of these in class.
but I just want you to get these written into your notes right now. I also want you to get this exciting vocabulary written into your notes. Now there's two different types of series that we could deal with. The first of these is called a finite series or a partial sum. The sum of the first n terms of a sequence is a finite series. It has an end. It's also called a partial sum if the series or if the sequence could go on forever. You can see that this is a finite series because it ha would have a numeral n up here at the top, and then it's going to have a formula. So an example would be the one that we just did. So I goes from 1 to 6 of 2i plus 3. So that's a partial sum. Now we could also have an infinite series. Here you'll notice I still start at 1, but it ends at infinity. So a lot of times these series diverge. That means that their value just gets larger and larger. But sometimes we can find the sum of the terms of an infinite sequence. An example could look like this. Okay, you'll notice I'm going from 1 to infinity, and I'm going to say 1 over 3 to the i power. So it'd be like 1 3rd plus 1 9th plus 1 27th. You're adding a smaller value each time, so that series will eventually converge to one value. Okay, so we have the finite series, see the n at the top, infinite series, infinity symbol at the top. So let's practice with a couple of examples. Here I have the sum as i goes from 1 to 5 of negative 2i plus 6. So we'll find my first five terms. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 plus 6 is 4. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4 plus 6 is 2. Negative 2 times 3 is six, negative 6 and plus 6 is 0. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8 plus 6 is negative 2. And negative 2 times 5 is negative 10 plus 6 is negative 4. So there's my terms. I'm going to add them all together. And if I sum these, hey, I notice I have some opposites here. This should be really easy. So the value of this series is 0. My next problem, please notice that the lower limit of summation is 2. So I'm going to start with the second term in the sequence that's defined using the formula negative 3i plus 1. So I have negative 3 times 2, that's negative 6, plus 1 is negative 5. Then going up, negative 3 times 3 is negative 9, plus 1 is negative 8. Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12, so negative 11. Negative 3 times 5 is negative 15, so it's going to be negative 14. And finally, we've got negative 17. So I'm going to add these numbers, negative 5, negative 8, negative 11, negative 14, and negative 17 all together. Okay, and I notice this is negative 25, and this is also negative 25, so we've got negative 25, plus negative 25 here, plus another negative 5. So overall, my answer is going to be negative 55. So this sum is negative 55. Now one thing to keep in mind as you're doing these, just as a quick check, the lower limit of summation must always be a whole number, and the upper limit of summation must also always be a whole number, and it must be greater than the lower limit. So if you have something like from i equals 12 to i equal to 6 up here on the top, you can't have a bigger number on the bottom and have something that's making any sense. You're also not going to have rational numbers here or irrational numbers. They're going to be whole numbers. Okay, so that's some 
finite series or partial sums. Next, we'll look at the sum of an infinite series. So you see here I have the sum as i goes from 1 to infinity of 6 over 10 to the i power. So I'm going to write out the first few terms and see if I notice a pattern. I obviously am not going to write out an infinite number of terms, well, because we'd be here too long. But let's, okay, my first 6 over 10 to the first is just 6 tenths. And I have plus 6 over 100, then plus 6 over 1,000. And I'm thinking this would be easier to do with a decimal representation. So I'll change the 6 tenths into 6. Plus 6 over 100 is 0 0.06. Plus 6 over 1,000, that's 0 0.006. I think I see a pattern here. But the next one, 6 over 10,000, yep, that's going to be 0 0.006. Now, of course, this is going to go on, but I think I have enough here to add them together. So I add together. 0.6 plus 0.06, yeah, okay, and I get 0 0.6666. Well, this reminds me of a fraction. In fact, if this kept repeating, which I know it's going to do, it would be equal to 2 thirds. So this infinite series actually converges to the value two-thirds. As we keep adding more and more terms, we just get closer and closer and closer to that perfect value of two-thirds. So that's your introduction to series. And we'll use these. There will be some special formulas for special types of series that we'll talk about later on in this chapter. Thanks.